Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. My name is Serge. Joining me today, I have a Nelly. Hi, I'm here. And a Wheeler. I was wearing this before <laughs> you were wearing that. That's impossible. What time do you wake up this morning? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. You got me my 15 minutes. <laughs> As you can see, everybody, I've been invited on the podcast, but I'm still not in the group chat. <laughs> Don't worry, there will there, no more secret channels after this one, I promise. A couple more years, I'm sure. You know, <laughs> eventually we'll get there. A reminder that North 100 is brought to you by you with your support over the Patreon over at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Welcome to our part one of our Wilds of Eldraine set review. A reminder of how we do our set reviews. These are not exhaustive. We do not talk about every single card in the set, just the ones that we think are good or that we think you'll talk about a lot if we don't. And we also have the Commander cards in here as well. Today we're going to be covering white, blue, black, and red. And we expect this to take two episodes. So, yeah, watch out. We're coming in fast. Wheeler, start us off. Cheeky house mouse. One white for a 2-1 mouse. <clears throat> that's it. But there's also an adventure. So maybe it's not that's it. Uh, the adventure is Squeak By, a single white sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and it can be blocked by creatures with power three or greater this turn. It's a Savannah Lion with upside, the upside being an additional spell. Uh, I kind of like this. It's one of these cards where, like in a more aggressive mono white list that plays a whole bunch of elite Vanguard style cards, uh, it's just another one of those to have. But the fact that it's a creature with a spell attached and that spell can help push through damage against, you know, big shieldreds, Uros, whatever. Somebody carrying a GTA? Yeah, it, that too, right? Like yeah. you can uh, you can slide on through with a GTA or with a, a sword. Well, nobody plays swords in Mono White. Mono White. A batter skull. <laughs> batter skull, sure. Um, yeah, it's got some good going for it. It's a little late to the party yeah. a lot of the death and taxes lists have already kind of swapped to being well humans or <laughs> you know more deathy and taxi than this but it's got enough going for it that i you'll probably play it against this at tables all right next up Nelly. flavor win sorry i just oh. wanted to say big flavor win obviously yeah next up thank you court of ardenvale Two generic white white for an enchantment that reads, when Court of Ardenvale enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. If you're the monarch, return that permanent card to the battlefield instead. This is a card from the commander set. I like it. Um, I'm not sure how much the other courts have been played in our format, but it does introduce the monarch and... Provide value every turn, whether you're the monarch or not. Um, for only two more, more mana, you could get Sun Titan. I don't immediately know which deck wants this over, you know, other four mana draw more cards every turn things, since this one can go awry. But uh, I think this card's fine. I can see how. What do you say? Ruin your evening. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> turn my Kami. <laughs> get the monarch and return Kami a false hope every turn. Sure. Just keep fogging or... Yeah. Yeah. Either way, either to the battlefield, your hand, you're happy. Yeah, oh, I matter. hate that. Yeah. <laughs> Bad at remembering your monarch trigger during combat damage step. Just play Wheeler's awful deck. <laughs> mm, delightful. All right. Next up, we have the Heart Flame Duelist. This is a two mana three one human knight for one and a white, and reads instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Now it also has an adventure side, the Heart Flame Slash. Two and a red, instant three damage to any target. Now, this card is kind of cool, and correct me if I'm mistaken, is this only the second time there's ever been the effect to give lifelink to instants and sorceries? You're going to say third, aren't you? I think it's the third. Oh, all right. Yeah. Can you name them? I don't know. Uh, Soulfire is. Grandmaster. This is the obvious one. Quintorious. Yeah. Uh, or no, sorry. Sorry. Radiant Scroll Wielder. Right. James, can you uh, can you look that up? From Radiant? Strixhaven. From yeah? Strixhaven. All right. I forgot about that elephant. I think this one's a dwarf. Oh, the the the, the radiant scroll wielder. Radiant How scroll Quintorious wielder. Quintorious is right. a four mana okay. two four dwarf cleric. I should never question Wheeler. Why He's... would you? <laughs> Look, you can't be good at a lot of things, but you can be really good at some things, and Wheeler's really good at this. Oh, when are you going to pick that one thing to be for, good at? For me? Oh God, <laughs> it's coffee. Oh, okay. I just can't. All right, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Homer into bushes, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
See, it's the shirts. They're making. Like dads are fighting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My two Waldo dads are fighting. <laughs> Unfortunately, I found both of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. All right, back to the duelist. Uh, this card's sweet. I like how aggressively pointed it is. In, it, how aggressively priced it is, not pointed. That means something else in our format. Like a two mana three one is very strong. A little bit later, the three damage is fine. It's also a human and a knight, which is increasingly relevant. Um, I just always have a hard time thinking where to put this. My first thought is something like Jeskai, but I don't know if this makes the cut in Jeskai. It's a really cool effect, though, and I want to throw it really quickly to the Jeskai players. No. Yeah. It's too expensive. There's a world, too fragile. There's a world where this would fit into Jeskai. There's like so, the, obviously, the options are so deep that. It's a hard cut, but I agree. I like the flavor, the gust of this card. I think this is sort of like a tier two Jeskai card. You know, it the could, big... could still win a game. It's just not necessarily correct to put it in your deck. There still isn't a red white burn deck where I think you want this to be. I just don't think that deck is good, no. uh, which is unfortunate. But maybe, maybe you duelist fans out there will find a home someday. Wheeler, spellbook vendor. One and a white for a 2-2 human peasant with vigilance. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, you can pay one generic. When you do, you create a sorcerer roll token attached to target creature you control. For those that don't know, there are a series of rolls in this set and the commander set. Um, and they are all aura tokens that you enchant to creatures and provide effects. So, for instance, the sorcerer roll here says enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever this creature attacks, scry one. Um... I like this card. It's one of the more interesting cards in the set to look at. There's a couple of... The most straightforward comparison is going to be Luminarch Aspirin. Uh, the two-mana one-one that beginning of combat, you put a counter on something. But this has a little more... This, this has some additional upside uh, in that, obviously, it's a 2-2. Two -two, it has Vigilance. And getting to scry every turn is not nothing. Uh, it's... That really helps the mono white deck, which doesn't have that much inherent card draw, kind of helps sculpt the draws. You got skull clamp and whatnot. Um, but I think this has a lot of good going for it. The downside is that roll tokens, uh, only uh, a creature can have only one roll on it under your control. But you know, the, we don't need to get into the specifics of Woe Limited. Um, and so you can't actually start stacking this on cards. You can't cards. just make your flyer big twice. Yeah, like right? yeah. Luminarch Aspirant. Yeah. It doesn't take over by itself to the same Plus extent. the mana, obviously. Right, yeah. The mana's a, a big one, too. But uh, d and is a deck that has some extra mana that is always looking for playable humans at two. Um, and if you have, like, two creatures, like, getting, you know, those rolls passed around onto them is still pretty impactful. May I have so, one addition to this? Yeah. Sanctum Stompy. Yeah. Because there are a lot of the new enchantresses that don't care if you cast an enchantment just when an enchantment enters the battlefield mm -hmm. and also care about the density of auras and enchantments that you have. Yeah, and that deck has a lot of extra mana lying around. Extra mana and also a need for cheap creatures that want to cast it or contribute to the overall strategy. Yeah. Because like, some of those creatures get pretty janky. Yeah. So I test this in this. I don't know if it's a slam dunk, but it it feel it feels like it should fit. Yeah, it's the kind of card where people look at the whole I can't stack my rolls and I have to pay mana. Mm. And as like that's bad. Why would I play a card with anything bad? But just in practice, I imagine this card will uh end up doing a lot more to advance your board than you'd think, than you'd expect. Luminar Aspirin and the new three mana Luminar Aspirin are like some of the most important role players in DNT. Yeah, they're gross. Yeah. They <laughs> they let you run away with a game. Yeah. And just any kind of anything that can add to that redundancy, even if it isn't as permanent, um, is welcome. Nelly. We want to talk about Werefox Bodyguard in case uh you um wow, what's it called? Sorry. The Hunter Enjoyers, the original Innistrad. Friend. Why am I forgetting Daybreak bag Daybreak Ranger? No, the guy with the bag. Let me Fiend put you in the bag. Hunter. Fiend, Fiend Hunter. Hunter Enjoyers. Have oh, had yeah. Fiend? Your day in the sun oh. for a while. Sorry. <laughs> I said Hunter. That was right. Anyways, one white white for a 2-2 two -two creature elf fox knight with flash. And when where fox bodyguard enters the battlefield, exile up to one other target non-fox creature until where fox bodyguard leaves the battlefield. And... One in a white and sacrifice Werefox bodyguard, you gain two life. So yeah, 
what's not to like about this Banisher Priest with a bunch of upsides? Um, the only thing it's lacking is the ability to take out another Werefox bodyguard. I'm not really sure. I guess it can't take out a Mutavault either. But yeah, while not maybe quite as terrifying as Brutal Cathar, I still will be unsurprised to see my DNT uh, opponents trying this one out in the coming weeks. Uh, I like it a lot. It has Flash and can exile a creature with Flash. You can protect your own creature or take out theirs. You can gain life with this thing if it's going to die on a chump block anyway. Um, I don't know what's not to like, really. Three mana, but... You can't get this effect for less than three I mana. know, I know. That's the a, that's a tough part. It is the best Fiend Hunter I think they've ever printed. I just don't know if we want it. I don't know if Brutal Cathar might be better still. But mm -hmm. if, you, if you're only, say you're playing some format where you're only allowed to play one Fiend Hunter in your deck. Yeah. Do you, do you think this one's still better? play Thali's Lieutenant in my deck? Yeah. Then I'd say Brutal Cathar. Okay. But, <laughs> okay. but yeah, this one's good. Yeah. Like, it's different. Brutal Cathar yeah. doesn't have flash. Yeah. So. yeah. I mean, honestly, any any of like the blue-white flash decks too, like this is, yeah. yeah. Oh, I should try it in tempo. All right, I'll move on. Good uh, card. Next up, we have a card that... I'm going to be honest up front. We're kind of medium on, but we wanted to talk about it just to complete the cycle, and that is the Court of Vantress. We're moving on to blue here. Four mana, two blue blue, for a enchantment that when it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose up to one other target enchantment or artifact. If you're the monarch, you may create a token that's a copy of it. If you're not the monarch, you may have the court become a copy of it, except it also has this ability. There's copy enchantment at three mana. And other than a very all-in enchantress deck, you don't really see a lot of play with that. There's similar effects for artifacts as well. This is just too this is just too slow. Uh even for even for the monarchy, four mana, enter, not really impact the board other than just the monarchy. And you're introducing the monarchy in a way that really can't protect the monarchy. It feels like a lot of risk for not a tremendous amount of upside. Yeah, it's not even until end of turn, so you can't even, like, time vault shenanigans. It's kind of poo. It's, it, the, <laughs> yeah, it, it sort of reads win more. Now, the ceiling is really high, but, yeah, it, it looks like this card works if you are already ahead. Mm -hmm. Wheeler. Elusive Otter. One blue for a 1-1 one, one Otter with prowess, and creatures with power less than Elusive Otter can't block it. And then there's an adventure, Grove's Bounty, for X and a green. You distribute X11 one, one counters among any number of target creatures you control. So a one mana 1-1 one, one prowess is kind of hot. Uh, obviously, that creatures with power less than it can't block it. Means that if you get this big, uh, then they're taking an otter load. Um, <laughs> however, this is not really a card that's comparable to something like Monastery Swift Spear or Soul Scar Mage, in that this doesn't attack very well without the prowess. Like the other two cards also threaten, like you still have this available, but like Soul Scar and Monastery Swift Spear are like, oh, I am attacking with these, and my opponent has a 3 3. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. You know? And you can or, play mind games. because Yeah, of course. There's right? just more flexibility in those, and obviously them being red makes for a more aggressive uh, play pattern. But this has a spell attached to it, which is pretty neat. And so I'd like to try this out in Rug Blitz, hmm. the, like, Rug, uh, Berserk, Monastery Swift Spear, kill you, like, in two shots, uh, Tarmogoyf kind of deck. There I think it fits in um, because... Play all your pump spells, and now it's also just unblockable, and you don't even have to give it trample. Yeah. And then you can also just have a cheap spell to help permanently buff stuff. So yeah, it's got a good, a lot of good going for it. I don't like it in Sorensen. I don't like it in blue-green, though. No. I don't think that's what that deck's trying to accomplish. Um, but Prowess. I actually, I feel the other, I don't entirely understand why it doesn't stack up against Soul's Mage. Swift Spear is still the king, but I'm just thinking about this card in blue-red Blitz. And I think I like the ability more than Soul Scar Mage. Yeah, you can play it in a Blitz deck. It's fine either okay. way. It's I mean, just I agree. the one two means that it can attack with impunity, even if you don't have anything, right? Like people can't call your bluff 
very well on Soulscar. But if Soul they can block, then they don't have, you don't have to bluff. Eh, there's just like tokens generated. Flash right. but I, I think there's... that's the thing, because like if you're pumping prior to blockers, your hand is already shown. Sure. Whereas with those other cards, you can kind of be like, no, you don't, you don't, you don't dare block this. Sure. You get more value out of this card by dumping everything before you even go to combat. Right. right? So, so since the play pattern is kind of suboptimal and, and sketchy, then it, it feels less good. Yeah, that and then the fallback play pattern is just more vulnerable. Like more resources need to be expended if you're attacking into like Llanowar Elves. All right. Next up. You know. We want to talk about Sleep Cursed Fairy. Mm. One blue mana for a... 3-3 three, three Fairy Wizard with Flying and Ward 2, and Sleep Curse Fairy enters the battlefield tapped with three stun counters on it. One more ability, one and a blue to untap Sleep Cursed Fairy. Okay, so the flavor of this card is you get a, a cheap initial investment of one blue mana for a 3-3 three, three Flying Ward 2, but wait, you have to wait three turns or six mana or whatever combination of getting your fairy online so it can attack. However, because it's a creature that can untap itself, it's sort of got half of, uh, you know, one of those enchantments that untaps a creature from Kamigawa. What am I thinking of? Uh, Freed from the real. Freed from the real. Slapped on it already. So there's potential combo shenanigans if you have some other thing that provides mana by tapping it or whatever. Um, I'm not, like, super high on this card or immediately jumping to put it in some sort of combo deck or fairy deck. And I think... In the in the shell where you're looking to combo with it, great, you can combo with it, and in every other place, it's like, I just think it's too slow. I don't think we're we're gonna play any beat down with this because three turns is too long. I would rather just pay three mana for a three three flying. There's you, always that math you have too of, hey, this is obviously ahead of the curve, but it has a, a downside. And there's been a long line of of creatures like this, and you're like, is the downside worth it on this one? You're like, no. <laughs> There's a long line of them, and how many of them are good? Right. I can't, <laughs> I can't I think of the first one. Yeah. Maybe just in black. Death Shadow. Yeah. Like that's oh, okay. the right. Mana. Yeah. Right. Sure. yeah. One or, mana, or but even, you gotta wait. Yeah. Or even there's some of the like um, six power four mana demons with pretty huge downsides. Those right. are those are close. I'm gonna get ahead of the comments real quick. Uh, this isn't Delver of Secrets. And if you think that, like, well, if Delver doesn't flip, am I going like to attack three with turns. it? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I've killed more players with unflipped Delvers than you have played matches of Magic. <laughs> like, it's. You Listen just... to Grandpa Wheeler here, all right? <laughs> yeah. Literally, uh, last night, Highlander, Robin Sorensen, in a match, uh, plays a Delver. His opponent goes, it'll never flip. And he goes, who do you think I am, Ben Wheeler? <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah so sick burn but good, good yeah comment. All right. All uh, right. and and no for flying men okay yeah all right oh yeah definitely not for flying men right yeah. D does anyone heard of or, or see or chatted about like some sort of combo deck with this in our format uh i mean there are sure a lot of really brave individuals <laughs> okay. in our community all but right. all right fine. Uh, next up, the Snare Master Sprite. One mana, one one, fairy wizard with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay two generic. When you do, tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter onto it. This is a flying man. You should play this card in flyingman.deck. I don't know if we have enough fairies to make fairies a thing yet, but I am thinking about it. I just want you to know. I am going to get to that for our next uh, card. Don't awesome. you worry. Well, then why don't I throw it to you? Which will tie into, actually, it's going to tie into this card, and not sure. just because it's a snare yep. master tying in mm. to the card. Tying. Italian's yeah. Messenger. <laughs> uh, two and a blue for a 1-3 fairy noble with flying. Whenever you attack with one or more fairies, draw a card, then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on target fairy you control. People have tried to make fairies work in our format for quite some time. Bitter Blossom. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's just there's the siren call of really bad blue-black creatures. <laughs> and while it while you can win, or in the past people have maybe like managed to foro an event with this deck, um, Thoughtseize, Counterspell, Mana Drain, Dismember, these are all very good magic cards. Yeah. Pair them with any kind of evasion, yeah. and you're going to win the game occasionally. Um, and there's just not enough fairies to reinforce the theme. There's also not really enough of a reason 
as to why you want to do that. Because you can already play like a blue-black deck with a heavy evasive theme and disruption without having to play cards like this. That said, I think there is a version of Flying Men that puts an emphasis on playing fairies. Mm. Because you can kind of... Honestly, the difference between one of your one mana one ones and another one mana one one is pretty negligible. Right now, uh, from a previous North 100 showdown, a Canadian Highlander throwdown, mm -hmm. I was on kind of a spirits sub package. Um, you can turn that to fairies and play cards like Snare Master Sprite or maybe even play this card. Um, but a dedicated fairies deck... I mean, like, do you see after this set a deck that you're comfortable with, like the choice, like the list is good, you're happy with it, and it includes Scion Abuna? Do I see that? Yeah. No, I like right. winning tournaments. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor Scion Abuna. Yeah, I mean, even if I like... It's and, four mana, blue, black, blue, black, blue, black, blue, black, right? No, that's no. two generic and a blue for a 1-1 one, one flying flash. Other fairies you control have plus one, plus one in Shroud. What am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking of you're Una. You're thinking of Una, the, Queen Una, of the Una, Fae. Una, I mean, Queen that card fae. is... There's plenty of decks. Yeah. yeah. Rock I mean, Una, Queen of the so Fae. Let, that, let's talk about I'm our all-time fa favorite fairies here that are cr like criminally underrepresented. Spell Stutter Sprite. That's a good one. That one's in Sorensen usually, isn't it? Hasn't no. It? Or it was. It yeah. Was, it was I like for a while. Spell Stutter Sprite and little little guilty pleasure of mine, Una's Prowler. Okay. Two mana, three one. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like a Mistbind click, honestly, and that's like a yeah. really dedicated fairies card. That's but the like, other good one. <laughs> yeah. But like you, you can only include that if you have like, I don't know, whatever brave number of fairies you're willing to. Fairies is really good if you start talk telling people about the deck and then they like i've heard enough after you've list five creatures then, like those You're are like, all so good. spell stutter sprite mistbind clique vendillion clique like, brazen oh God, borrower brazen. this deck is crap and then you're about to say the worst <laughs> thing possible and someone's like i've heard enough <laughs> I've heard enough i'm sold i don't you just know. say cryptic command instead yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i don't want to i don't want to dump on this too much because there is a card on our set list that is a fairy lord that we'll talk about. The the blue black one? Yeah. That one, yeah. That, that card that, is th that's so one, good. That's the one I think that makes the difference, right? Yeah. Like, isn't it just slightly better sign of Uno though? Like No, that one draws cards, drains them, and yeah. it's like a two three or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 okay, all yeah, right. yeah. All right, all right. Uh, we do have one more good fairy to talk about. Okay. Sure. Let's Nelly. Talk about, oh, is this a good fairy? Tw Tw Actually, oh my know. god! Can someone else say it? Twining for me? twins. Is it twining? It's, it's not twining twins. It's right? twining. There's only twins. one twining. end. Okay, great. I just... Well, there's two ends. Well, there's three if you count. That's before. right. Yeah, three. You know, <sighs> I just wasn't really sure how to say the word twining. Um, two blue blue for a four four creature fairy wizard with flying vigilance and ward one. So the creature side's pretty good, but there's an adventure. Swift spiral one in a white for an instant. Exile target non-token creature. Return it to the battlefield under its own control at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, so let's talk about the adventure for a second. This is one of these blink cards that works offensively. It doesn't say you control, mm -hmm. although you can't take out your opponent's Merit Lage. I saw you thinking about it. Um, <laughs> but if you are trying to generate value on your own side, you don't get the creature back until the beginning of your end step. Um, although I guess you could get it back on the next end step if you want to blink it on your opponent's turn so uh, a two mana blink card that you only get one activation out or one trigger out of but you can hit your opponent what's the three one flyer that used to be like classic dnt flicker wisp flicker, flicker wisp. wisp like that's 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 it's the, the, the same effect, trigger right? the yeah exactly yeah. it is the same yeah whatever that's called flickering and then on the oh, creature no, side okay. Okay. Yeah. you right. get you get a four four for four flying vigilance with ward one like sarah angel eat your heart out yeah <laughs> jesus yeah so i don't know that it's the thing about this card is I don't actually think it's like the best, uh, you know, like by today's standards, four mana for four, four flying vigilance, ward one questing beast is out here looking at this, like only three <laughs> abilities. Right. But it is like, and, and the two mana to flicker something, it's like, okay, two mana, but it is very solid. Like this card just like plays really good fair magic. Go ahead. Wheeler. It is a tutorable, like you can Ella Damry's call for a flicker. Mm. Which is, I think, the first time, like, we talked about Flicker Wisp or, like, Charming Prince, like, other classic examples sure. of that. But this is the first time that, like, instant speed, you can Eldamry's Call, find this, and then Swift Spiral, and then untap and slam your 4-4. Which, like, you're probably going to be up on, like, like the ball's going to be in your court because you've just blown somebody out or you've, like, I don't know, flickered a Palace Jailer or whatever. Call or something, right? Sure. Yeah, well... They might have spells and signs, but regardless. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I mean. yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a 
a bonus. I think this card is you just look at literally that little pocket. Like you cut off creature and then have the adventure. <laughs> and then the the actual adventure is the rest of the card. You know? Like you just really you're really stoked that Swift Spiral Wheeler's is a creature card. It. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're really stoked that you get this tutorable blink. Mm. And then by the how the gameplay of these blink decks plays out, you will just often find yourself being like, well, my opponent has zero creatures. They can't really do anything. I now actually have to kill them. <laughs> and doing that with like one ones and two twos can be a little tough. At yeah. Times. As a band blink player, I mostly bring the deck when I just feel like playing a lot of magic. <laughs> yeah. Like not, not a lot, not like winning a lot of magic, but like playing a lot because mm -hmm. the way blink, blink works most of the time is you just like put a whole bunch of one and one and two one creatures on the field. And then like, by turn six, maybe you're willing to attack or block with one yeah. of them. Mostly it's just these little tinker toys you're playing with and you can't have any of them get destroyed or you're sad. Mm -hmm. Whereas like this card really says like, okay, sure, we'll blink your Elvish Missionary and then we'll get to attack and block. I'm having so. a hard time evaluating this specifically for Blue Eye Tempo. I'm brewing Blue Eye Tempo right now, which is sure. why this is in my brain. And it's it's close because that Swift Spiral is so strong. But I'm never going to get Aether Vial to four. And I don't know how often a Tempo deck wants to play a four drop threat. But the Swift Spiral is so strong. This sounds like more a meme than I want it to be, but I mean it it's at least it pitches the force a will and force a negation. Like it's just yeah. like it a four mana blue card that is just immune to lightning bolt and can get pitched to your force and has another effect. Like yeah. I yeah, I think it's not the worst thing to include in your I'll deck. See, I'll see if I'm short cards and I want to feature, specifically if I wanted to feature <clears throat> new cards, I think it's absolutely worth trying. Sure. I think it's solid, but I don't see it sticking around for very long in any deck that isn't dedicated yeah. blank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the black cards. And up first we have Ashiok, Wicked Manipulator, our first Planeswalker. Five mana, three black black, gets you a five loyalty Ashiok with a static ability. If you would pay life while your library has at least that many cards in it, exile that many cards from the top of your library instead. There's a plus one ability. Look at the top two cards of your library, exile one of them, and put the other one into your hand. Minus two ability. Create two 1-1 one, one black nightmare creature tokens with, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if a card was put into exile this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. And then the minus seven. Target player exiles the top X cards of their library, where X is the total mana value of cards you own in exile. Overall, I don't love this card. But the static ability is very, very interesting to me. And I'm wondering if there's some kind of degenerate like Necropotence combo. And mind you, Wheeler's making a face for the audio-only people. People aren't really playing Necropotence right now, but when you see something like that written on a card, your your mind starts to wander, right? Like I think yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put myself out here and Wheeler's gonna roast me again. I'm gonna say this is maybe only the second time. <laughs> There's been an effect like this, and there's like an old <clears throat> mono artifact or something like that that was similar, right? It reads uh, a bit like Crumbling Necropolis, but yeah. Crumbling Necropolis is uh, symmetrical and cares about damage, and this one's only okay. if you would pay life. Oh, the crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe... But it's it's similar. It reads like that. Sure. Right? Yeah. Do you so, remember? Oh, yeah. No, I want to cut in. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot go? of thoughts yeah, here. Go. I'm going to let you finish all your thoughts. I just want to cut in with some comedic um, banter first, because do you remember when we were previewing cards to, like, write uh, the last episode of Punt Counter Punt, and we were, like, looking at this card, and Kathleen's like, okay, is everyone done? And I was just like, I got bored. Yeah, <laughs> I got bored. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I got oh, bored. poor Ashiok. Wow. Sorry. Um, <laughs> So Necropotence is a great card to include in your deck if you've ever wanted to just lose the game. Mm. Uh, I, th I not to be not to sound too much like a heel, but that card is gen it's so bad, dude. It is so bad. I've told the story about Jeremy playing it against me, and I go, "Oh, well, he's lost." And then Robin going like, "Dude, you were losing until he played Necro, and then he lost." Um, and then also just like the idea, it is a 
very powerful effect. Yes. Right? That's an effect that's ripe for abuse. Yes, um, absolutely. The problem is that, like, a lot of the cards that you would, like, finally, we've broken Yawkmoth's Bargain yeah. or Gristlebrand <laughs> or, or... Whatever that the tomb is, the, like, three and black, black, black artifact that lets you play cards off the top of your Oh, Bolas is Citadel. Bolas is yeah, Citadel. Like, finally. that card doesn't need help, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, finally, we've cracked the meta open. I mean, it yeah. curves nicely it's, into Bolas Citadel. I guess... You can, you can make two chumps, so it's still alive for one more turn. So I, I guess know. the important thing... This is this is something we've said before. Don't play bad cards to make your good cards better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's an example of of poor Ashiok here. Yeah. Sorry, Ashiok. Shall we move on? Yeah, let's talk about a busted card. All right, Wheeler. Yeah. Beseech the mirror. One black, black, black for a sorcery with bargain. Uh, so bargain is effectively kicker. You may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast the spell. Search your library for a card. Exile it face down, then shuffle. If the spell was bargained, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. If that spell's mana value is four or less. If you don't do that, you put the exiled card into your hand if it wasn't cast this way. So basically, uh, four mana with bargain, find something four or less from your deck, cast it for free. Four mana without bargain goes to your hand. You could also bargain and then not play it, but... I kind of want to find my Yawgmoth's Will to then cast for free and then maybe replay the, like, Chrome Mox that I sacrificed to do this. <laughs> I was going to say Bad Creatures version of Storm is back on the menu. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, we got to get the Chub Toad or whatever. All right. Now, help me out here mm -hmm. because I'm on team Why Not Just DT. Uh, You're allowed to do that too. Yeah, you could do that. you do all of it. You do both. This card costs You're points. Just happy though. for yeah. redundancy. This card well, zero points. I mean, imagine. Uh, but if it ends up being completely cracked, I mean, one of the first things to get pointed is tutors. Yeah. Yeah. This card I, is zero points for now. I, I don't think it's. I, I don't think it's completely cracked. It is. It shares a lot of DNA with like dark petition. Yeah. Which a lot of storm decks don't even play yeah. anymore, except for the bigger black ones. Like yeah. Uh, no. Because yeah. like I, I'm thinking the the mana reduction isn't necessarily even there over other tutors. Uh, yeah. Speci unless you're going for like high value things and what, you know, we're talking about like the bad creature tutor deck maybe back online. But well, they're, they're just like a lot about Storm is uh, you just have density. so much mana and sure. you just okay. need a tutor. Yeah. Like right? okay. to put that common in perspective, um, it, I mean, it was a while ago, but not that long ago that like it was common to see diabolic tutor yeah. in storm lists. Sure. Yeah. Like the last time I won a tournament with Storm, which was like a while ago, I was including Diabolic Tutor. Okay. Notably this can also help with uh it sounds funny to say, this can help with fixing mana. Uh even though it's a triple yeah. black card. Oh, that's right. what I want to say yes. too. Yeah, it's like yeah, finally it's easy another easy way to put um uh Baldur's Gate Minsk and Boo into my uh, mono oh black my deck. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, oh see I was going to go with like find my Teferi Time Raveler yeah. against the blue okay. or, like, oh, yeah. my the City of Solitude okay. or whatever. Yeah. Every black deck has all these Yeah, your dark ritual suddenly can cast anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I am I stand corrected this card is sweet. The floor being diabolic tutor is very good. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Sick. Yeah, fantastic card. We're going to we're going to be playing this one for a long time. Yeah. Court of Luck Thwain, another commander court cycle card. It's two black black for an enchantment that says when this enters, you become the monarch, and at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of target opponent's library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and mana of... Uh, and Sorry, I got lost. And mana of any type can be spent to cast it. It's a long paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> if you're the monarch until end of turn, if you're the monarch, comma, until end of turn, comma, you may cast a spell from among cards exiled with Court of Lockthwain without paying a spell cast. Okay, so let me let me rephrase. So basically, every turn at your upkeep, you're going to exile your opponent's top card of their library, and you're going to be allowed to play that card, and your mana is going to be fixed to play. You just have to put generic mana in to cast that card. But if you're also the monarch, you get to cast one of those cards for free. It doesn't have to be the one you flip this turn. So... Better than the blue one for sure. <laughs> as long as it remains exiled, as yes. long. I'm yeah. with you. I don't. It's like I could read these cards five times, and I start reading them again. I'm like, You're what? Like, Wait a second. Yes. How did you Hold sneak on. Sneak that in yes. there. No, I swear I said all the words. I yeah. made myself, but my eyes did like glaze over in the middle of the paragraph. But honestly, this card is okay. Uh, yeah, it like it draws a card every turn. You know where I would put this? So I made this black white. Po curse pox super friends deck oh yeah tell me about it and then i gave it to surge and then he death clouded me for four. Oh yeah um Woo! 
but I could see this card showing up in that. Like this is like getting to cast a card every turn or even like the, the floor of this card is that your opponent somehow gets the monarch. You never get it back, but you also are just at parity because you get yes. a card, yes. even though it's up from your opponent's deck, which is not ideal. Uh, the, the like case of get the monarch, draw from the monarch, exile their card, cast it for free well they've got nothing going on too because they have no resources because you're a pox deck right yeah kind of wild i mean it is a four mana technically do nothing but i could see this card i mean if you're like a black x or a mono black deck that is just like like, you're not doing anything you know (laughs) we're not doing anything comrade comrade (laughs) comrade yeah our deck comrade Uh, (laughs) like i like how if you're drawing cards off your opponent's library like that'll on average help you get the monarch back Mm-hmm. You know, and you get to do that even if you're not the monarch. Also, so. just like the card quality in Canlander overall has gone up, but also just like it's not as bad as it used to be when you're like, okay, get a card from the top of your deck, Jackal Pop, <laughs> right? Like, you know, not that doesn't show up as yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Next up, uh, this is from the Jumpstart product. We have one card from sort of that supplementary product. This is the Experimental Confectioner. Confectioner? Confection. Confectioner. Confection. Three mana, two, three human peasant for two and a black. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token. And whenever you sack a food, create a one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. Now, I love this card because it is a food payoff that doesn't require you to sacrifice the food to it. It is incidental upside to food being sacrificed to other things, not even necessarily life gain. Um, And I mean, I think we're like maybe five or six sets deep now where we're like, I think we're getting somewhere with food, especially after Lord of the Rings. This is it. Absent. This is like the card that they couldn't put in in the Lord of the Rings set because the Absent food would have been too good. I'm calling dibs on playing food at the next Friday Night Paper Fight. All right. I'm, I'm, what if we do, what if we make a food fight and we all bring our own version? Everyone has food to bring deck. a food yeah. deck. Yeah. Everyone Incredible. brings a food deck, right? Oh, hell yeah. I like going home at 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> just, just oh, bring my God. cots onto the, yeah. yeah. We all just oh, amazing. We'll have to order in pizza or something yeah. while we yeah. play. We'll have to uh, order all the foods. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you haven't been following the conversation, there's becoming an increasingly high density in food matters cards. Uh, this one is very cool. It has never been, food has always been powerful, and the effects that have made food have always been powerful, but the density and the payoffs, kind of like the Lords of the Fairy decks, just haven't been there, and they're getting there. Uh, so yeah, watch out for a food fight coming soon. There is a cool combo with this card, too. Hit me. Uh, computer, uh, and by that I mean James, pretty please, are hmm. you able to grab a Peregrine Took? Oh, yeah. Lord oh, of the yeah. Rings. Uh for those that aren't familiar, and while it, we try to get it up, uh, Peregrine Took, I believe, is two and a green yeah. for a two-three. Yeah. Uh, it's a hobbit of some Halfling. sort. Halfling. Sure. Halfling uh, rogue or something. And w- if you would make a token, instead you make that token and a food token. Oh, my God. And then it has sacrifice three food tokens, draw a card. Confectioner doesn't say when you sack one or more foods. So if you sack three foods with Peregrine Took and then make three rats, and they three make foods. three foods, so you make infinite rats, draw your deck. And you can also do it at instant speed on their yep. turn, too. And these are both three drops with single pips. Yeah. The food deck's coming. It's starting to turn into you like... You can yeah, cocoa into this combo. Oh it's starting God. to turn into like a Sandy B. Right. Sandwich B. Is sandwich. It? Sandwich, sandwich B. burger. Yeah. Oh, my sandwich God. Burger. The oh, B stands wow. for burger. <laughs> sandwich, comma, burger. Yeah. I'm yeah. actually really hyped for this food fight. Now. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to sit down and brew this. But I was going to... Go ahead. It's just going to be the hardest deck to build. Yeah. In, oh, yeah. Like, God oh, yeah. how long. I was going to put most of the halflings in the deck anyway, but I yeah. didn't realize one of them just goes infinite <laughs> yeah. immediately. Yeah. 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 That's sick. Uh, okay. are... uh, just really quickly, oh. I'd like to jump in here. Uh, there is no jumpstart product for this set. So oh. these are jumpstart cards that were made for a set that didn't end up coming out. 
you can only get this card in, I believe, collector boosters and set boosters. Oh, oh good. So just, it has... just so people are yeah. wondering, wait, where do I actually get so this we, from? So we should pre-order our copies. Yeah, before, before this goes live. This goes <laughs> live. <laughs> All right. Sorry, everybody. Woo! Go to cardking.com. Yeah, there's like an uncommon symbol here, and it's just like secretly orange. Yeah, because it's number th- uh, 0314. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Wheeler. Gumdrop Poisoner. <laughs> Uh, two in a black for a three-two human with life link, and I believe He's it's doing a this warlock. Right now, because the card's not up yet. There you go. Yeah. Oh, it is. Uh, with life link. Yeah, nice. It. Thank you. I lost to this at the PPR. <laughs> That's uh, true. To reiterate. Yeah. Two in a black, three-two human warlock with life link. When it ETBs, up to one target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. And then there's an adventure single black instant. Tempt with treats, make a food. I can't believe I'm so happy for just one mana make a food. Because oh. we got that from Curious Pair. Right. So like 1-3 from original Eldraine. But that card's bad. Yeah. Like that card doesn't do anything. Two mana, 1-3 vanilla, this, right? Hold yeah. on. Isn't there also in green in Lord of the Rings, uh, find a basic land and make a food for a single green pip? There is. But that doesn't impact the board, my dear boy. Um <laughs> <laughs> There's an, <laughs> but it was it all was right, an upgrade right, on, on the initial an credit card. Right. I finally got to unaction you, and I got <laughs> dunked on. All right, anyways, keep going, keep going. Uh, yeah, I like this. I'm going to try it in the food deck because yeah, yeah. having this come into play and killing something, but also just being a three-two life linker that makes a food. What about your white black ruin your evening? Does the life gain and like ETB mean anything to you? Or oh, no? I'm going to play it in that too. Okay. I just wanted to spare you from more ruining of your evening. <laughs> this card actually might be good enough to play in like mono black aggro too. Like there's there's <clears> enough. <throat> Bears with lifelink in black now, maybe that you just don't. I mean, even... They're not. They're not blocking your gift to Aetherborn anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, cool just card. really like three mana, three two lifelink maybe kills a creature. Yeah, yeah. Or Golgari, Golgari mid range, yeah, just yeah. like you have scavenging ooze and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The card's a lot better than it looks. Yeah. Moving on, more three drops in black. This is my personal favorite card uh, from the set. Uh, Lord Skitter, Sewer King, two and a black for a 3-3 legendary rat noble with whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile up to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 black rat creature token with this camp block. Uh, yeah, they get. I guess they just want to make as many graveyard trespassers as possible now. This is pretty close, right? Gobbling Rattle Master. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Gobbling rat lil master. Gobbling gobbling rat lil master. <laughs> um yeah, obviously very solid card. Um gets to come down, immediately make uh a rat and exile a creature, um, as long as it survives until the beginning of your combat step, right? because uh, it doesn't exile something or not exile a creature, it was a card from the graveyard. It's probably a creature though. Um and then uh yeah. If the, so if they kill it immediately, sure. It does. It does fail that litmus test, and it it dies to bolt. But you know, solid mid range card. Get in there, make extra creatures, attack, exile your your opponent's important stuff from their yard. Just like everything about those cards. Sure. And this one goes wide, whereas Graveyard Trespasser doesn't. Next up, we have the Tangled Colony. This is a two mana three two rat for one and a black. Can't block. It was one in a black, and I read the word block, and I was like, nothing <clears throat> nothing makes sense here. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it has another line. Uh, when it dies, create X11 one, one black rat creature tokens with a camp block, where X is the amount of damage dealt to this turn. Very important to note, this does not go in Aristocrats, because when you sacrifice it, it does not give you a second body. Uh, this really only cares if you are playing against red or if it dies in combat damage. Um, if you are playing a black aggressive deck, and you want to have creatures that have more power than the mana you invest into it, you play this card. Um, the fact that it can't block also shows you that you should be turning your creatures sideways. No part of this creature is defensive in any way. Have fun killing people with rats. Let's move on to red. Charming Scoundrel. One in a red for a 1-1 one, one human rogue with haste. <clears throat> when Charming Scoundrel enters the battlefield, you choose one. Discard a card and draw a card create a treasure token, or create a wicked roll token attached to our creature control. The wicked roll token is plus one, plus one, and when the aura goes to the graveyard, uh, your opponent loses one life. So <clears throat> this could be a two mana, two, two, that when it dies, they lose one uh, with haste. Or two mana, one, one, make a treasure. Two mana, one, one, 
rummage. I don't know, dude. <laughs> like it's just it's it's boring. Which it's is no wild to say. Over... It's no charming prince, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like it, it's always going to be like a little bit solid, but I don't really know which home it has, right? Ash Zealot. Which is a two mana two two with haste yeah. and first strike, my yeah. Game. But even like if you ignore the first strike, like Ash Sellet just being Valley Dasher is good. Like just two mana two two haste is great, right? But the terrifying thing about this card is just like the other ability, right? Well, when it becomes relevant, when sure, Ash yeah. Sellet's ability Ash becomes Sellet relevant, it's yeah. so relevant. Yeah, exactly. What I mean is that like the floor of Ash Sellet mm -hmm. is just more two -two appealing haste. than what I guess the best version of this card is. Even though this is easier to cast and like redundancy is a thing, but I. I'm... The only thing I can think of for this deck is specifically like a red white equipment deck because the treasure can maybe help the, the sort of turn that you want to play, like cast and equip equipment, sort of the alpha strike out of that and a little mm -hmm. bit of card selection. But but even then, I'd have to go through and look at what I'm playing at too because I'd play Ash Zealot over it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because that, that card, it does the same sort of thing. It's aggressive, it comes down because like haste creatures are great in the equipment deck. Because if you draw them late and you already have equipment, they can suit up and swing. So mm -hmm. that's pretty huge. It's like haste and double strike are probably like the keywords you care about the most in that sort of deck. There's like a bell curve when it comes to magic players in general, but especially Highlander players, where early on into the format, they're just like, uh, why would I play this card? Because it does all these things worse than other cards. Mm, right. Then you get to the middle and it's like, actually the flexibility and being able to like address the scenario and do whatever you need the card to do is, is the real strength. And then you get to the top or top tier. And then it's like, nah, you're just overvaluing this. Just play a better magic card. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I am trying to think of like what, if say you're in red and <clears throat> not green specifically, or, you know, the, making a treasure token seems to be one of your best options to ramp. If you need to chump as well, like two mana, one, one, make a treasure token. Is that beaten by anything other than like dockside extortionist? There's a three mana. There's one Wiley. Well, there's Wiley Goblin, which is exactly that, but it happens to be a goblin. So it right, it costs two red. Right, costs two red. Right. Yeah. Two red, right. Uh, and then there's uh, Prosperous Innkeeper, right. which is a one-sided soul warden. Yeah. That does it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I got no, Let, Let's move I got, on. I got Billy. nothing. Yeah. Let's talk about a card. Sure. I get another court. It's Court of Embreth. Two red, red for an enchantment when the center is become the monarch. And at the beginning of your upkeep. Create a 3-1 red knight creature token. Then, if you're the monarch, Court of Embereth deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of creatures you control. I mean, I love a card that goes upstairs. Uh, <laughs> the hard part about this one is that red's already fighting. Um, there's so many great options. If you happen to love paying four mana to draw an extra card every turn, yeah. red, <laughs> that was like a piece of red's identity for a while. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Specifically exile, right? Yeah, exactly. So... Um, I don't know. This one's not my favorite of these either, but it always makes a knight, and sometimes it goes upstairs and kills your opponent. I just hate that it doesn't have haste. I don't know what deck you could possibly put it in. Go ahead. Three one? Like three one. my brain. No, no can't abilities. Wrap why aren't they why aren't they ball one? lightnings? Like the little spark lightnings, the three ones with trample and haste and sacrifice them. Like that'd be more interesting to me than these weird three one knights. Or a two two yeah. first strike. If it if it made two two first strikes, I'd be like, This is a good card. Boys, your magic players are showing. Mm. Why isn't this card just strictly better than yeah. what it is? Yeah. <laughs> the years. Well, I'm trying to make sure. It fair. I don't know. No, yeah, I mean, I uh, look, I love these effects. Yeah. What's the Boros one from RTR that like it keeps assemble the legion? Oh yeah, assemble the legion. Like yeah. I have that used to be one of my go-to win cons in prison decks. Right. Right. You like you have your academy rector on the board. You wildfire. Everything dies. You go get something like this, and you have a win con that just sort of accrues and pumps out value every turn. Yeah. And court of empress like making you the monarch after a wildfire or something like that is kind of cool, but it just doesn't feel like it. It gets there. On the other hand, it being monocolor, because a lot of these effects are often typically Boros, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of neat. And I it, can't think of how many are just red. It's nice that this helps you keep the monarch. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't and know. And take it back. Mm -hmm. I think it'll see play in decks that aren't the most tournament viable, but that are cool to play and can certainly win matches. Maybe in Big Red? Yeah, yeah, I played yeah. in big red. Sure, yeah. sure, why not? Your deck's not getting worse. <laughs> or, uh, uh, you're I mean, not wrong. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, next up, it's me. Double checking. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we have the Embereth Veteran. This is a one mana two one human knight for a single red pip, 
and one and sack the veteran, create a young hero roll token attached to another target creature. And then the 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 young hero roll is actually quite powerful. Uh, whenever this creature attacks, if its toughness is three or less, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So it can grow to become the hero of your story, which is kind of neat. Um Downside, this is better than a jackal pup because we're talking about in red. This is better than a, yeah. a better than a Yeah, well, pup. but you know, because yeah. we're in red, so we're not saying Savannah Lion right. or something sure. like that. Yeah. Um, notable, it is a human and a knight, which are both, you know, relevant tribes and stuff that we're doing. Uh, the young hero thing is kind of high. I just don't know how many decks care to play a one mana, two one in red. Uh, red deck wins. The one that RD, wins, yeah. The, RDW the is the pretty best. happy with this. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah. Is this good enough to make it into RDW, though? I just. If, I figure their one drops are already so competitive. They only like, barely cut Jackal Pup recently, right? Really? Like, I genu no, no. Some lists don't even cut Jackal Pup. Sure, like they're still jamming Jackal Pup in 2023. Yeah, so you could. I yeah. I was convinced for one red two one. I would play this if it was one red two one. Pay one sack it. Nothing. <laughs> like I would just. I, it is yeah. weird. Like given because it, it, like there's Jackal Pup and like there's a, a couple of those have weird downsides and they there's a couple of their like crazy upside like Ragavan. Yeah. But then they haven't just made Savannah Lions in red yet for whatever reason. Always. Yeah. Have to have you can tell how often on. I play RDW right now, right? I'm <laughs> like, sure. there's got to be a density, right? And you're like, oh, so honey. There are, a bunch, <laughs> there are a bunch of different ways that you can actually build mono red. You can build sure. a very aggressive one that is still playing Jackal Pup. Right. Yeah. Right. You can build a Fairly aggressive one that has swapped some of the Jackal Pups for a bit higher card quality, which this card will still probably slide into that. Uh, and then you can do like spell slinging stuff, which yeah. this one might not get into that because that deck typically it needs slots for its like Kessig Fire Breathers or Firebrand Archers, uh, and it will trim off the Jackal Pups to make up that room. Um, but yeah, this card's a slam dunk in uh, Red Deck Wins. This card's so powerful, I wonder if it was like originally templated as like one generic and a red for a 2-1, and when it dies, you get a young hero roll. Because like, just like being able to put a young hero roll in other creatures like a super Chris Mooney ability. did have a story about this card. I right. can't remember if it was actually something similar to that. Okay, sure. I was like in the room at that time, so maybe I remember that too. <clears throat> Anyways, really, I really like it. All right, Wheeler. Godric, Cloaked Reveler. One red red for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature, human noble, with haste. And celebration. Celebration is a new keyword ability that just says, as long as two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield, bah, uh, under your control. Uh, and so if that happens, Godric is a dragon with base power and toughness 4-4, four, four, flying, and pay a red. Dragons you control get plus one, plus one, or plus one, plus zero oh, until end of turn. Um, again... This is just like a, I, I love a brazen scourge. Mm -hmm. And so just a three mana, three, three haste. Great. Uh, three mana, three, three haste that if my rabble master triggers, my legion uh, war boss triggers, my, I don't know, I played a chrome mox. I did anything in medium red. Um, <laughs> you can get this active. Oh yeah. There are some downsides though. One, medium red is not very good anymore. It's it's lot or not 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 very good, but it is kind of being usurped by Gruel Monsters as the like ancient tomb mana deck of the format. Um, yeah, I was just thinking we haven't two. done this. I There's could have no done it with Lord mana. Skitter. I thought about it. I thought oh. about it for Lord Skitter. Yeah, but yeah. man, if this um, had ancient tomb mana, my god, it gets Caracas, yep. which is less of an issue for your Blood Moon deck with that also might be on Strip and Waste. Um, but also, just we're kind of past the point of caring about these cards. You know, like it doesn't make additional tokens. What is this? What is adding this card to our medium red, medium red or gruel monsters deck do? Right. It doesn't really fix the issues that some of our three drops already have. In fact, it just exemplifies some of the issues some of our three drops already have. Um, and like, yeah, this might kill some people. I wouldn't feel embarrassed playing this card uh, or trying it out in something like Boros Humans. It has style points. Yeah, I mean the f again the floor is that this hits for three the turn that you play it. Yeah, which is pretty exciting, and then can start hitting for even more in subsequent turns. So I don't know, give it a shot. I won't, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nelly, let's talk about Hearth Elemental. It's five and a red for a four five elemental with this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard that are instants, sorceries, or have an adventure. 
Also, it's got an adventure itself. Stoke Genius for one and a red, a sorcery that says discard your hand, then draw two cards. Okay, so when I see this card, all I can think about is like blue red spells matter. Mm -hmm. And it's cool, but I don't know that it makes the cut. Do you do you like it in like red deck wins? This it's okay is, in red deck wins too, I guess. I like it in blue red. I like do it. Do you in like the it in blue red? red? The blue okay. red spells with all the weird deck. sea serpent stuff. All the other ones that have this effect, right? Yeah, yeah. and like I, the prowess the, creatures. Yeah. The problem this card draws a lot of comparisons to Bedlam Reveler. Yep. Right. Uh, but Bedlam Reveler costs eight mana, and so like imagine how many spells you need in your graveyard for that to be actual castable right Doesn't bedlam, Revel bedlam reveler also have a keyword like menace it's got prowess prowess yeah 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 but it doesn't have any evasion sure it draws cards on etb but like i mean the big idiot that gets cheaper for sure. your spells yeah, in yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. um but this card does a pretty good job of like setting itself up as well as uh giving you a good pivot point if you actually use the stoke genius uh i can actually see this in the mono red spell slinger style deck too with the thermo alchemist and stuff yeah actually i think i like that more like is it is this card just like a way better um flame of keld oh i i'm a classic flame of keld hater so oh, okay. yeah i think okay. so um just like the fact that you get more control over when you do this how you play it out that you can stoke genius and then pivot to either casting this on the same turn or firing burn spells uh and it's just got big body and like playing a match of magic like, you could cast this for three mana, right? Sure. Getting yeah. three spells in your graveyard as mono red is not that difficult. And it's just nice to have a four or five. God, this could be a goyth. Yep. One last thing. Mm. I'm slowly pivoting to this conversation, that, uh, on in this conversation, to agree with Nelson in that I think I'd like this better in that spell slinging red because the blue decks use their graveyards more for Merc Tide, yeah. Treasure Cruise. You know, you want to use your points for cards like that. And you also, that's where you get a lot of your power, but for red, I mean, go nuts, right? You're eating out your lap, not eating out your life. Man, sir. <laughs> I mean, you should do that. It's respectful, <laughs> but you know, it's just, you're, you're draining some of your lava mancers. Sure. Uh, fuel. Thank you. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Kellen, the Fey blooded. And I'm so glad I got this because yeah. this might be my favorite card from the set. So three mana, two, two legendary human fairy for two and a red it has double strike and other creatures you control get plus one plus oh for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen. And then there's an adventure, two mana sorcery, birthright boon for one and a white, search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it and put it into your hand and then shuffle. Just talking about earlier, one of my favorite decks is red, white equipment. This is a card that both gets you equipment and has a payoff for carrying equipment. Honestly, just having double strike is good enough, and the fact that it somehow buffs your other creatures just a little bit too is just icing on the cake. I like this a lot. I don't think I'd play it anywhere else. Oh, I mean, it also has Ancient Tomb mana. Anci ancient Tomb mana. You gotta work on your phone. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a microphone here. All right. <laughs> we gotta cut. Next up. That. Monstrous Rage, one red instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn, and you create a monstrous roll token attached to it. Uh, monstrous roll is an enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one is trample. So this is one red. Target creature uh, in this combat, in this instance, localized entirely <laughs> on my Sky Shroud Elite, uh, gets plus three, plus one, and trample for a single red. Great. That already is so... Yep. Good. Doesn't even say attacking. Yeah, just any gotcha. creature. And then it just sticks around. <laughs> it's another permanent. It just sticks around. Oh, God. Yeah, that's great. No notes. Play yeah. this in decks with pump spells. Like like Berserk? Ooh. Like uh, Scale Up? Monstrous Rage? Or like I don't know, My, like top I, five. I would probably, put this top, right? I would put this top five. Yeah, like I don't know yeah. what your favorite is among like the hexproof pumps. Where does or it whatever, go like, around like team or battle rage? Yeah, yeah, like oh, I'm a known battle rage hater. Well, oh, I just okay. I only want to compare with other one mana ones. Yeah, 
Sure. But like in terms of one, like maybe like become immense. It's like to be berserk, it, berserk, mutagenic growth, blossoming defense, become immense. This card. Sure. Wow. I think that's wow. fine. Yeah. I just don't think it's slipping out of the top five in anybody's yeah. like fair yeah. evaluation of one mana pump spells. So good. Even that, Nelly. Yeah. Okay. Raging Battle Mouse. One and a red for a 2 1 mouse that says the second spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast. And celebration at the beginning of combat on your turn. Slow it down. If two or more yeah. non land permanents entered the battlefield under your control this turn, target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. I got a little excited there. <laughs> the Raging Battle Mouse really has a. It's got that energy to go, it. Go, yeah, go, go yeah, yeah. vibe. Um, but honestly, I think this card's a miss. Uh, the second spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast is this like very kind of swingy and hard to like depend on powerful effect. The fact that this thing doesn't tap but can provide one mana every turn and then also attack for three is a huge upside. And there's going to be plenty of games where this thing does tons of work. But I just don't know how much you want to include your deck. Like if it said second spell you cast each turn costs a red pip less to cast. I could see an argument for putting in red deck wins or maybe even medium red or something like that. But as is, I just don't, I don't know where you want to like actually put it. Anybody? This card's bad. Wheeler. <laughs> I don't know. I just really, it, I always find it funny when magic players are like, so this card's bad, but what if it were in a completely different magic? Yeah, I mean, that's what I want to do, right? It's like, this what is if, how I change the ability to make it better, it but that's not what it is, right? I just can't see how it's good the way it is, so then my, that's what my mind Oh, yeah, does. I don't think it's that yeah. great. I think it's closer to, like, uh, Burning Tree Emissary that pays off, mm. like, on subsequent turns. Really? But, I well, in the sense that you play it and it lets you double spell, sure. but it lets you do it on turn three and beyond, right? as Instead opposed to just two. turn two yeah. and only on turn two. Um, and then the celebration's not nothing because it's target creature, but I do think it all falls short. Yeah. Like, I think there's some play to this, but it's just also one toughness on a card like this is just so bad in a yeah. world of fork bolts and furies. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Next up, we have the Rotisserie <laughs> Elemental, one mana, one, one elemental with menace. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a skewer counter on it, then you may sacrifice it. If you do, exile the top X cards of your library, or X is the number of skewer counters on it, you may play those cards this turn. I like this card specifically because it's an elemental, and I want a density of more elementals because I want to play four color Omnath. Otherwise, I don't really like this card. Uh, I. I think of this as like a worse version of Bomat Courier. I just like the flexibility of Bomat Courier. I like the way Bomat Courier attacks. I like that it, it's an artifact. Uh, I think this is a little bit clunky, specifically the timing of when you have to decide to sacrifice it. Because if you're applying pressure and you don't necessarily know if you want to take your foot off the gas in order to draw a couple cards with it and, and the exile, I don't know. It's it feels It feels very clunky to me in a way that I don't like. But I would I'm willing to be talked out of it. Checks checks facial reactions. I mean No, it's yeah you're fine. Uh, yeah. yeah. What's the biggest what's the best one mana menace creature? Like maybe that that is the thing this creature has going for it. The comparison to Bomac Creator is fair, but the ability is like way, way worse than Bomac Creator. Yeah. But it is a menace creature for one mana, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool and like there's just not very many of them. That's what I was going to say. Okay, was great. that like yeah. I do? I understand the comparison, but I think that it's beneficial for players, us, us included, yeah. to start when we look at cards like this. Is don't think it of it strictly as a worse version of X because it's a different version, yeah. right? Like the fact that it does have menace is something that's unique to this card and to this slot. Right. Yeah. Um, the fact that it is not an artifact can actually be beneficial in a world of Night yep. of Autumns, Rex yep. Ages, yep. Yep. all that. Um, and then, like stacking up these counters, getting them to play until at a turn. Like there are spots where that might be, like there are some niche scenarios where I, that can come up. I do still agree <laughs> that I think overall it is worse than Bomad Courier, um, and that you are unlikely to find room for both. There are, but. Another comparison, uh, go with me on this journey, but you have to help me out first. What's the name of the 1-1 one, one flying artifact that you can sacrifice your opponent and cast non-land spells? Hope in of Gearper. Hope of Gearper. 
has a similarity to this card and specifically that its sacrifice ability only works after it's connected. Mm -hmm. And you have to make this choice, not knowing anything about what's going to come up next. When is the correct time to sacrifice this? It's dealing one damage. It has this one shot to get a big payoff, right? So Rotisserie Elemental comes in. It's got two counters on it. You know, the board state. You're like, is now the time to crack it? What if it dies? What if it never gets in again? I think that's interesting more on, on a like... Uh, it's fun to evaluate sort of thing. I don't know if that makes it good or not. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm starting to think that the whole long paragraph ability is just a red herring, and we're supposed to be focusing on the fact that this costs one red pip and has menace. <laughs> now that I think of it, I can't think of another creature that has one that costs one mana and has menace. Isn't there a 1-1 one, one death touch menace that has... It's like a creature on one side and it flips over to professor from like strixhaven valentin oh that's, that's menace lifelink, lifelink. Yeah. That's menace, yeah menace lifelink oh, you're right that right? is a one drop with menace yeah okay all right take us home wheeler last card of the day scalding viper one and a red for a two one elemental snake that says whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value three or less deals one damage to that player and then it has steam clean love it for one in a blue sorcery return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand i'm not that impressed with this card uh one damage like this is going to draw some comparisons to uh idolin of the great revel yep. um and some of the other cards in that line cemetery gatekeeper and friends um but a two one no other abilities is just it can't really attack <laughs> And it can't survive against a torrent of fork bolts and furies and whatnot. That co that covers for a lot of creatures too. But like a two minute two minute two one is just such a hard sell for me. Like in red, um, or even in red blue, like no flash, no nothing. It's just it kind of hits the table, kind of just annoys you a little bit. I mean, the uh, one upside about this over Idolin is it's not symmetrical. So if you're in a sort of sure. deck, you can you can protect it. You can be proactive with trying to clear the board. Whereas Idolin, you're kind of all in on kind of trying to clock them out. Idolin symmetrical? I thought it was yeah, any player casts a spell that's three or less. The red the yeah. RDW player just doesn't I, care. I don't know the but they are taking you, damage. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Huh? It's just never come up in my red deck. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> <laughs> Wheeler trying to think of the last time there he had cast an idol on the Great Revel, put it on the stack, and then the game kept going. <laughs> yeah, I every time I cast this, my opponent dies, and my life total doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, comparisons to Eidolon and Pyrostatic Pillar, but it's symmet it's not not symmetrical. I actually like this for for red deck wins. You know, I think the two one for two and and dying to pyroplasms or pyrokinesis or whatever, totally fair. Um, but I just think that this effect is rare enough that it's worth trying and worth including. I think it's telling that we haven't even talked about this through the lens of is it though, right? Like I don't this know is, it is it. yeah, it's just it's the uh, <laughs> yeah, steam clean. It's nice to have this uh, flexibility, but be at sorcery speed, it's just like the whole package is just not enough. Which is a great. If you could change it. What would? <laughs> <laughs> if only the steam clean side was an instant. I mean, yeah, that might give it some strength, yeah. but um, yeah. I think the whole package isn't enough. It's just a great like tagline for this set as a whole. Um, <laughs> we'll get to, we'll get to we'll that get to in the episode. next episode. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just you know kind of managing expectations. Sure. We're gonna call it there, friends. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions or differing opinions about the cards we talked about today, or if you think we missed any cards, let us know in in the uh, comments down below. Reminder that everything we do is brought to you by you with your support of the Patreon over at patreon.com slash loading ready run. I've been Serge, joined by Nelly, and apparently my identical twin, uh, Ben Wheeler. The premier Waldo pilot of the format. <laughs> what? But I was Waldo for enough. It's fine. This is Cashmere Surge. <laughs> Back down. Oh, dang. All right. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you for part two. Bye-bye. It's over, Waldo. I have the next <laughs> Yeah.